suspect that they are probably ringing their bells. There we go. Indeed, there are not a lot of sheep on this screen over here. Marine Lord has not found a single one, but indeed, in we go to game number three. On French Pass, spawning on the left side, it is going to be Marine Lord in red Chinese, representing easy. And on the right side, in blue, we do have a French player. Who is that? We have got Beastie Cutie playing as the French. So a, an interesting matchup here. Now, this is something that I often talk about quite a bit, and I'd love to focus on the Chinese player's build order here uh, and just see exactly what Marine Lord gets up to in this early stage of the game. So we can already see that his berries are quite far away from his wood line, but he's got a great little spot for his Imperial Academy here where he's going to be able to pick up his gold mine as well as his lumber camp and his mill if he's, if he's smart with it. That's going to be the key thing. It can come down to positioning for that Imperial Academy, but he's got a great little spot there just above the town center to hit all four of those re or all three of those resources so hopefully he picks that up yeah th that's a very nice triple out there oh. but wait a second villagers oh. running out of food beast is going to get that treatment looks like today the french are simply running out of food they seem to be super hungry because in the previous game and now in this one as well the french players simply started running out of food great start for marine lord as he said great base layout for him for that potential imperial academy whereas for beastie it is a quite underwhelming start over here, having to place that mill early, having to go for the berries at the beginning. Yeah, that really hurts against the, the Chinese as the French player. Um, and this is the consequence of, I think, playing it a little bit too greedy. So one of the things that people love to do in the early stages of the game, instead of with your starting scout, you've got some decisions you can make because you start off with a single sheep under your town center, but you've also got two that are very close to your town center. And you've got a question that, that you've got to answer. Do I want to take my scout and waste time on grabbing those two sheep now? Or do I want to get out onto the map and start finding those neutral sheep as soon as possible? And the problem is, if you do start going out onto the map and finding those neutral sheep as quickly as possible, then you might take a little bit too long to get back in with those sheep, and then subsequently you get what happened to Beastie here. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a mistake coming out from him uh, in at these, this point in the game. And part of the reason why he went so aggressive on trying to find those neutral sheep is because he's up against the Chinese here. The Chinese, they love to have every single sheep that they can get on the map because obviously their food eco is completely based around those sheep at the beginning of the game with the supervised mill. So every single sheep that you can take away from the Chinese is extra value out here for you. Beastie tried to make sure that he's grabbing as many as he can possibly get. And, well, as you pointed out, he simply ran out of sheep underneath his town center, so he had to go for the berries. Um, what's more interesting is that he's still staying on the berries, and this is a very beastie-esque thing to do. One of the key principles that he's always uh, showing the audience in his guides is that he really doesn't like to move villagers, because every single second the villager moves, he's not gathering resources. So in beastie's perspective, it's better to keep those villagers on berries right now and not move them, as compared to just moving back to the town center, moving them to the sheep, which normally has a higher gather rate than the berries. Interesting Imperial Academy uh, placement coming down here. So obviously this one is quite far away from the town center, so it's going to have a little bit more free space with it. Uh, but by the same token, it's going to be away from that mining camp uh, that gets thrown down. But he does manage to pick up the, uh, the stone as well as the second patch of berries. So not a terrible place there for Marine Lord. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Yeah, it's an interesting one for sure. I wonder what's to the right of that because uh, it's on the stone. You could think yeah. about that one as well. So there's probably a reason why he placed it uh, over there instead of placing it a little closer to that forest. I agree with you. 7 out of 10 seems a reasonable one for that Imperial Academy. It's going to be a very nice one to start off with. It includes the mill. It includes the gold. It includes the stone as well. You d didn't get the forest in, but well... It's still a pretty nice one. It is going to get spotted by Beastie though. So right now, Beastie is fully aware of what Marine Lord is doing. In fact, he's torching down that academy. It's not going to be an effort that's going to yield a lot for Beastie though. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Just leaving his scouts to idle and be annoying in the meantime, but now heading towards the gold mine, we can see that Marine Lord's still quite heavy on gold. Curious as to whether he goes for an early Song Dynasty or what the way that he looks to play it. Uh, but uh, as we are going to be focusing primarily on him here, the, the ball is going to be in his call. We know what French is going to be up to. We know that he's going to be getting out an early night, probably going into professional scouts, probably go for a second town center. You know, that typical French play that we do see, but the China player, that's that's the interesting thing. Right, guys? Right, Lidicor? Right? right? Right, that's right, indeed. First Royal Knight in queue right now for Beastie QT. Marine Lord 
he loves his French. He is very conscious about the timings with that civilization. So Marine Lord knows very well, okay, this is when I get the notification that Beast is up to Feudal Age. So from this moment on, I have X and Y seconds until that first knight reaches my base. And you see he's dropping the barracks right now. And knowing these timings helps you make sure that you're prepared for that push, but you're also not over committing. You're not rushing that barracks up with nine villagers if you don't need to, right? He's also going to have visual confirmation on that first knight coming out. So he's going to be fully aware that by the time that first knight arrives, that Imperial officer should be able to empower the barracks to an extent that he's going to have one or two spearmen to greet him. And now supervising that barracks as well. He's going to be able to chrono boost here, as we often say, uh, the upgrade. And keep in mind this upgrade, it is going to be giving him a beautiful rebate. So you pay a, quite a hefty amount of gold, 75 gold, but it's going to rebate 64 gold from that upgrade and going to be meaning that he can reinvest that into further upgrades. That's the great thing about playing this Chinese style where you've got your upgrades or your, your buildings that get upgrades in the Imperial Academy as you get these, this beautiful rebate for all of your early upgrades. And with that Imperial Academy being so much in the open field, it also allows you to place your production buildings, your blacksmith right next to it. And as you pointed out, you can get a lot of your gold investment that you invest into technologies back in the form of tax gold. Interestingly, we see him kind of anchoring himself towards this northern location. The way that he's walling off behind the uh, b behind the, the wood line, as well as the positioning on the spearman, indicates that he's really intent on expanding up towards that northern side. And it's quite an, a closed off side as well. If he wants to get some walls in there, he's very going to be, or he's capably going to be able to do that. Uh, but uh, that wall going to be able to help him there. And you can see it's it's got beautiful coverage. Yeah, indeed, it has great coverage out there. Also love the village right next to that wood line. So this way, if there is a knight coming in from Beastie Cutie like we're seeing, he can just jump into that village out there. The second knight also gets spotted over there. In fact, the spearman was even able to get one hit in. So both of those knights are somewhat damaged right now. Still, Beastie Cutie planning to push those lumberjacks. So far, wasn't able to accomplish much with those knights though. And this could be concerning because you don't want to drag this game out very long against the Chinese. Now we're seeing a Ford Villager though from Beastie. This could be a tower rush maybe? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be just some tower pressure, some light tower pressure. More villagers coming out as well. So take that light and turn it into a medium tower pressure because it seems like he's role playing as the Mongols right now. Beastie loves his towers. We talked about this one in game number one. And not just with the Mongols, but also with any other civilization he plays, because he understands that those buildings are very difficult to get rid of in Feudal Age. And they do provide you with a lot of line of sight, a lot of firepower, and also a lot of fallback options. So you find yourself overrun by a couple of archers. You can jump in there and get some shelter, buy yourself a couple of seconds over there. So there's a lot of things to love about a couple of forward towers over here for Beastie. Also takes uh, somewhat underwhelming engagement though against overwhelming numbers of spearmen and horsemen. Yeah, the horsemen here are going to be able to pick up these stray archers. And now there's knights out as well for Beastie, but it's not going to be enough to kill the horsemen in time by the time that those uh, those archers actually get killed by the horsemen. So smart moves already from Marine Lord. We did see two villagers begin to move out towards that western flank as well. So I suspect we're going to have outposts coming down shortly because I can't imagine him building anything else up in this position. We did see a scout go down as well, an uncharacteristic mistake, but those villagers have made their way around the corner and you can see Marine Lord knows that they're around here. He says, get back here. I know you're around here somewhere. And he, he's out there for blood. He's trying to find them. Yet to spot those villagers sneaking behind his trees. I mean, the only thing I can think about here for Marine Lord, though, is that you know how Beastie likes to play. You know yep. that he wants to sneak a tower up on you. So it's fairly obvious where you should be looking for those villagers. And he's going to find them in the end. He's going to take both of those down. The tower should not go up. And that's going to be two villagers down for Beastie, making the overall villager count dead even. Yeah, this is a really good find for Marine Lord. And now we've got that Barbican coming up. This is a great investment for Marine Lord over on this position. Typically, players would look to position this maybe a little bit closer to the center. But as I mentioned before, Marine Lord's going to be anchoring towards that northern side. That's where his expansion is going to be. He's got a hunt up there. He's got berry bushes up there. He wants to make sure that that is safe. So now we see that Barbican coming down. It's going to give him a, a whole bunch of advantages. Let's talk about the Song Dynasty, Ludicor. Indeed, and now Marine Lord reaches Song Dynasty. For those of you new to the game, the Chinese have a very new mechanic. Well, it's not new mechanic. It's uh, an interesting and completely unique mechanic that got redesigned very la um, lately. The Chinese, if they build a second landmark of a respective age, they're going to enter a dynasty. And in a dynasty, 
the Chinese do get specific bonuses. The Song Dynasty is something that you can get to if you build both of your Feudal Age landmarks, the Barbican of the Sun and the Imperial Academy. And this is going to give you a massive production boost when it comes to the villagers. It reduces the time it takes to make villagers by 35%, essentially giving you a juggernaut eco bonus. And this is essentially the backbone of all Chinese strategies. That Song Dynasty boosting your villager production. And after that, uh, it remains to be seen whether you go for Fast Castle or whether you go for a second Town Center. But that Song Dynasty is essentially a can't miss right now for the Chinese in the current meta. Yeah, it's going to enable him to keep up in the village account. We can actually see him moving ahead with the villagers as well. So he's going to be on 38 villagers compared to Beastie's 37. You wait for it right now because those villagers come out extra fast. But a nice little raid as well over on the gold mine now. Marine Lord doing a great job turning the attention towards the French player's side of the map. And that's exactly what you need to be doing in this matchup. And now Marine Lord with a very happy villager lead. And keep in mind, he's got three Imperial officials out as well. So that's a total of... Uh, essentially, he's got 42 economic units right now. Indeed, knights are now moving in from the northern side, though the Barbican will spot them. They will be greeted by some horsemen, some spearmen as well. The spearmen should be able to take a good engagement over here because the archers are busy building a battering ram. But one thing that Beastie may not know is that the ram push is coming from the north. The question is, is this push from Beastie strong enough to deal with that Barbican of the Sun and the army underneath? Because if it's not, suddenly we're going to be looking at a villager lead uh, for Marine Lord very soon. And with him also picking off a couple of villagers from Beast's side, that is starting to build up a pretty respectable lead on the side of Marine Lord. One thing to note is that the Barbican can retarget, which means that when that battering ram comes in, it will start by attacking that battering ram. And if you don't change it, it will continue attacking that battering ram. But what you can do is you can select the Barbican and you can say, I want you to attack the archers instead, or I want you to, you to attack the cavalry. So now all these units are going to move up. And when they do, the Barbican should be able to refocus down upon any of the units that move into its radius. Looks like the Knights are being withdrawn over here, now charging in there. Great engagement for Beastie Cutie. As good as it gets, he's trying to focus down the Spearman, but the numbers, they seem a little too overwhelming over here. He's gonna have to call off his forces, and the Spearman now running back home. Archers failing to pick them off. That Battering Ram, also relatively low HP, could be lost in this engagement. Exceptional defense over here by Marine Lord, and Beastie was not able to accomplish much with this push, and he's suddenly not uh, looking at a 10 villager lead in the favor of Marine Lord. Yeah, it's looking really good for Marine Lord at the moment. Neither player yet to drop down that second town center just yet. But we do see stone being picked up for both players. Marine Lord's got 90 in the bank. Beastie has 225 in the bank, but neither player continuing to gather up that stone at this point in time. So single town centers for both players at this point, but obviously you've got to get the advantage over to China because those villages are coming out faster. So while the uh, French have got the advantage of making villages faster, in the Feudal Age, I think it works out to be about 17 seconds that a single villager is created. For the Chinese in the Song Dynasty, though, it's 13 seconds that it takes. Indeed, that is going to be a massive boost in the favor of the Chinese. And let's not forget, if you're not pushing the Chinese, they will be happy to go to town centers over here. So Beastie QT, he's going to have to play aggressive. And Beastie himself, he has mined 225 stone. I wonder if he was thinking about the second town center and then he just gave up on that because... If you're playing against the Chinese, especially if the Chinese player is in Song Dynasty for a while, you need to consider going for a second town center yourself. Beastie decided to go for the aggression, though he probably feels the need to do so, and instead just investing all the resources into army rather than dropping a second town center. Yeah, one of the things that I've found that works very well against me uh, is if the French player goes for a two town center opening up against me on the, the, the Chinese, because I want to then go for two town centers, and then what they do after that is they go all in. That makes it really difficult to deal with, especially if, you, if your, your scouts are taken out early as well. It makes it very difficult for you to spot. Uh, but uh, obviously, Beastie's still sitting on that one town center at the moment. We see that that horseman, unfortunately, going to get taken out. But Marine Lord, his numbers are looking pretty healthy. But keep in mind, even though Beastie Cutie honest... Ooh, that's a lot of idol ooh, villages right ooh, there. Whoa, 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 ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot of idols. And Beastie's going to be aware of this. Beastie knows fully well that Marine Lord is a little strained for food. We could see that he has a lot of villagers out there in these pocket ecos guarded by towers on the berries. He also has some forces moving towards the hunters and the berry villagers of Beastie, though, and this could be a great interception here. So many villagers stranded in the middle of nowhere. That could be a couple of losses on the side of Beastie. Yeah, Marine Lord just doing a wonderful job here. So, you know, lesser players would make sure that they commit all of their forces to the defense here. They know that they're under pressure from the French player. And so as a result, they would leave all of their forces back home. 
But what we see Marine Lord do is turn the attention towards the enemy's side. And now we've got an age up coming through as well, but it could be a bit dangerous of a timing to do it as a lot of villagers are going to be going down on the front line. Marine Lord gets completely surrounded. Beastie finds a beautiful little spot, tries to bring that villager count a little bit closer. We've got 47 up against 42 villagers. He's opened it up a little bit more. Now things are starting to look up for the French player disaster for marine lord and he made a tremendous mistake he accidentally selected his villagers alongside some spearmen half of his spearmen are down to the south killing deer because he sent the villagers together with the spearmen towards those those spearmen are much needed on this battlefield they might be coming over already but you could see like there is still a spearman standing on that berry and behind this one knights are not pushing the berry villagers suddenly that villager cap just disappeared and beast is pushing straight into the base of marine lord as marine lord hits castle Imperial official goes down after trying to collect some gold from a rogue mining camp. The consequence of being a silly Imperial official. That is what you get. But uh, now we've got ourselves the veteran upgrades coming through as well. One thing to note is that Marine Lord is unable to chrono boost or supervise these upgrades because his enemy is sitting on top of the production. And that's why we see BC looking to focus down these positions. He's also sitting right on top of the clock tower. So in the event that there's any sort of siege that comes out of this, it's going to get immediately melted by the knights that are on top. And now we see those horsemen moving up towards the battering ram, looking to try and save the Barbican. The veterans are going to be coming out shortly on each of these production facilities. Chrono Boost is going to be coming out as well. The, the landmark does indeed go down, but with that, both of the battering rams will go down as well. Yeah, the battering rams are going to be gone, which buffers this up a little bit here for Marine Lord. But still, right now, he has a bunch of knights and archers inside his base, but he's getting his castleage upgrades. You see, he already has veteran spearmen. He's got veteran horsemen, and he's ready to take this engagement. Beastie could find himself very easily surrounded over here, and we could be looking in for a big engagement inside the base of Marine Lord. Now towards the base, we've got that surround coming through. Veteran Spearman together with the Veteran Horseman going to be able to connect with this army. And Beastie finds himself in a very difficult position. But Marine Lord is trying his best to push through this. We can see the numbers aren't looking the healthiest right now for him. He's going to try his best to hold on. And it looks like indeed he will be able to. The French player going to be rejected and told, go back to where you came from. This is the Chinese army. Great timing once again for Marine Lord out here. And this is so far the story of this game. He understands how many units he needs to take these engagements. He's not overcommitting. He's got some units down to the south. He had some units being sent towards the base of Beastie QT as well. But guess what? Now the archers are showing up. And suddenly those villagers, they're more exposed than ever. And once again, the villager deficit could be cut into very, very easily. Those knights could find themselves a couple of stranded villagers on the northern side as well. And Beastie QT is playing a great resource denial game here. Yeah, this is definitely one of the highlights for me. The way that Beastie is playing this resource denial really makes a lot of sense. But now we see more knights skating around the top side of the base here, looking to come in on these villagers that have just freshly dropped down a whole bunch of farms on that mill. We've got the Imperial official that's going to be supervising out some spearmen as quickly as possible to try and get to the front line. A single spearman comes out looking to deny it, but it takes down that farm. 75 wood going down. Marine Lord not going to be a happy camper with that one. Palace Guards also coming out, looking to force back a couple of those archers. He's got plus one ranged armor, no plus two coming through just yet. Spearman continuing to come out. He's got 14 villagers in queue. I can't help but feel like that may be a little bit too many, but that's all right. You keep doing you, Marine Lord. Yeah, at least he's not going to have an idle town center for sure, but he's also going to have a quite a lot of villagers dead soon to those knights. He's pushing back those archers on the right side with the horsemen, the Palace Guards. Now reinforcements from Beastie coming in in the form of knights. We need to keep in mind that Beastie is still in Feudal Age over here. So over time, that Castle Age is going to start uh, pushing Marine Lord ahead more and more. He's still ahead by nine villagers, but Beastie so far doing a great job maintaining the pressure inside Marine Lord's base as both players are starting to run out of food on the map. So we might see some more farms being added from both players. Yeah, Marine Lord now dropping farms around the town center. Uh, in un, and not an optimal way to play it, but I mean, when you're playing at this level and your APM is, is that damn high and you've got so many things going on over the map, it just, you know, just throw down the farms. Just get, get them down somewhere. I don't care. Just get them down there. Uh, and that's exactly what he does. Uh, but now starts to build up those forces. We can see he's got plenty of units in queue right now. Just going for the palace guards. Three Imperial officials because all of his Imperial officials have died. Uh, and uh, that is just, I mean, that's, that's pretty typical, isn't it, for China? Yeah, it's very easy to lose those Imperial officers and they carry 
tremendous value. This is one of the bigger weaknesses of China when they're getting pushed. It's very easy to snipe down those Imperial officers on like, let's say the scholars of Delhi that are garrisoned inside buildings. And speaking of sniping stuff down, those knights are still maintaining their presence on the northern side. And Beastie, I love how he's stretching out the playing field. In a relatively slow paced map, him being able to attack consistently from two directions stretches out Marine Lord's attention a lot and he's being rewarded with some juicy villager kills for this. Interestingly, Marine Lord doesn't like to wall up, and I, I find this very curious because a couple of walls here and there definitely would have helped him out a huge amount. But now Village is going to be able to turn their attention towards that battering ram. Not a lot of health left on that. He's going to be able to repel these knights towards the north side, but at the same time, we see more outposts continuing to come up for Beastie on this south side of the map, and definitely looking to really shake up this matchup in the way that he's playing and really keep in with this feudal playstyle. We don't actually see any economic upgrades behind this at all. No double broad axe, no specialized pick, not even a horticulture. Indeed, lack of eco upgrades definitely hurts here. And especially once Marine Lord starts grabbing those Castle Age upgrades, it's going to hurt even more because Marine Lord is consistently grabbing those Castle Age upgrades and slowly building up a lead for himself. He now has Lancers in the mix as well, so he can pursue those Knights that are coming out of Beastly. You get the feel that Marine Lord is slowly stabilizing over here and Beastly, he might be on a timer, but guess what? He's banking up food for Castle Age and with a bit of an eco balancing, he could be on the way very soon. The question becomes, is he going with the Guild Hall or is he going with the, um, with the Royal Institute rather? You can see the Imperial official moving out to greet the Royal Knights around the edge of the map there. Uh, and unfortunately does lose its life. We do see that up towards the top right of our screen. <laughs> oh, Imperial official, you always amaze me with your beauty. Uh, but uh, villagers now going down on the wood line as well. Things are not looking good for Marine Lord. There are plenty of units out for Beastie. And he's managed to do a great job. Obviously, we see Marine Lord is stabilizing. But to an extent, Beastie is also stabilizing the military numbers. Indeed, a couple of knights will get picked off over here on these wood lines. But ultimately, Marine Lord is not going to be able to pick off most of Beastie's knights over here. Beastie getting ready for that castle age. And he's actually had in villager count, which is pretty impressive, I must say. Being this much behind in villager count for a long time. And there's the Royal Institute. So Beastie, I like it. Beastie being so much behind in villager count and then still finding a way to make sure it's even against the Song Dynasty Chinese player is not an easy thing to do. And Beastie has done a masterful job at picking off villagers left and right for the last like 10 minutes or so. Yeah, and, and that's really been it. And I, I think that goes to the extent, you know, I, I, I talk about this matchup quite a bit, and I think it's very favored for the Chinese player. As long as they can survive that first 10, 11 minutes, then it's going to be A-OK. -okay. But the one thing that really messes with China is that Royal Institute. Because that Royal Institute is going to force the Chinese player to make crossbows. And that's something that they don't typically want to do. Because the crossbows that come out for Beastie are going to be much better, much more efficient. And China typically wants to stick with these palace guards, you know, maybe throw in a couple of chokunu, maybe throw in, in some lances, but crossbows, they're sort of, sort of a rarity. And now we see the elite upgrade coming through for Beastie as well. Uh, for those knights, I would expect that we're going to start to see royal bloodlines come through shortly, though. Yeah, he needs to grab that upgrade. And as you pointed out, the Chinese, they don't really want to make that many crossbows. In fact, if you look at the unit composition of Marine Lord right now, it's lancers and palace guards only. So just high HP knights with the Royal Bloodlines and Cantal Settles upgrades would be both of those. And you could also mix in some Arboletry over here if you're French. And this is where it's getting scary for the Chinese in Castle Age. Even if you mix in some crossbowmen with the Chinese, the French can match that with their Arboletry. And with the Royal Institute being available to you, you can get uh, the Gambeson's upgrade for your Arboletry. But even more importantly, you can get the Crossbow Stirrups upgrade in Castle Age, which is going to buff your Arboletry up to the skies. It's gonna be a substantially better unit composition for a French player over here in the next few minutes once those upgrades come in from the Royal Institute. Back in town center now coming down for Marine Lord. Uh, we still don't see any of those unique upgrades coming through just yet for Beastie. Uh, I'm not sure whether Beastie spots that second town center out, but it's going to mean that he knows that he'll be on a bit of a timer. Uh, but keep in mind, I guess one of the other things to note is that uh, playing as the French and going with this Royal Institute is that timers don't really exist for you because even if Marine Lord hits Imperial Age with 200 population, Beastie can just push in with a, a decent amount of knights as long as they've got that Royal Institute buff and nice he's going to be a-okay. Okay. Nice yeah, <laughs> that is something that we've seen multiple times coming out from players throughout the Golden League Grand Finals, or not the Grand Finals, but the final series. These little failed walls. I think what happens is that they're trying to delete the final pillar to make sure that it doesn't get bugged. But if they delete it before they actually start building it, it should just delete that section, right? And that's exactly what happened over there. 
a couple of knights got in. Reaction from Beastie was swift though, so not a lot of damage done over there. Uh, still no Royal Bloodlines upgrade though here for Beastie, and he soon needs that because it looks like Marine Lord, he's trying to force an engagement with the Palace Guard, the Spearman and the Lancers. Also, second Town Center is now in for Marine Lord, so he's going to start building up that villager lead once again. Yeah, now now he's got that two Town Center song, things are starting to get really serious. But still, we don't see any upgrades coming through yet from that Royal Institute. Uh, keep in mind, it's not so much of a timing push that you need to hit. It is as long as you're fighting it out in that Castle Age, you're going to have the advantage because those Royal Bloodline Knights are just going to be able to provide you so much more of a front line than any normal Knight would. Marine Lord is banking up tremendous amount of resources here, actually. You see his bank is at 1,000 food, 1,500 gold as well over here. One has to wonder what exactly he has on his mind with those resources. He might be flirting with Imperial over here, but he has to be really careful for the reasons that you mentioned before. But given the fact that he's the aggressor right now and he saw Beastie's army, he saw that Beast doesn't have those upgrades. He's aware that Beastie can't really counterattack right now, so he could really be thinking about Imperial here simply because he knows that Beast doesn't have the window to counterattack right now. Monk carrying a relic does go down, the Wallalo unsuccessful, and that's going to mean that another relic is out on this map, potentially able to be captured by Beastie. But obviously Beastie is, uh, is struggling at the moment, Lancer raids coming through for him. He's only got Lancers to really respond. One of those Lancers is going to be going down, but more and more villagers continue to be falling back towards that main town center. We see the Lancer numbers are looking very healthy and happy for Marine Lord. A lot of a lot of stone there is going to indicate that there's a potential keep that wants to get thrown down in the middle somewhere. So Marine Lord should be on the lookout for that. Yeah, Marine Lord uh, should be on the lookout. What is that Mong doing? Monk, I... what are you doing, my friend? <laughs> so he's walled off the center. Yep. Uh, so Beastie Cutie's walled off the center, and Marine Lord has sent a Monk out towards that position, rallied him in, and the Monk's just like, excuse me, excuse me, I need to get that religious artifact. <laughs> You're going to love the effort, though, from that Monk. He's not like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to walk around. He says, okay, I guess I can sacrifice myself for the Empire, just walk around two mountain ridges to grab that relic for myself. That's devotion. That is absolute devotion. But Marine Lord looking good. And the fact that he's keeping a lot of the, the fight over in his enemy's base means that behind this, the village account starts to go absolutely troppo. Marine Lord now building up a 33 villager difference over his opponent. That's massive. That is absolutely huge at this point in the game. Because remember, China wants to take this game late. Beastie doesn't. Beastie wants to try and finish this at the latest Castle Age. But the longer this game goes, the more likely it is that China will win and Marine Lord will go up in, in this set 2-1 in a matchup where Beastie is throwing out one of the best civilizations, the French, into a civilization that he thought was going to very easily be uh, beatable for him. He thought it was going to be the Holy Roman Empire. Instead, it's the Chinese. Very difficult spot for him. And Beastie got rated really heavily over here because as you pointed out, Marine Lord, he is capitalizing on that two town center Song Dynasty, but how about Beastie falling down to 48 villagers over here? Those few Lancers that got in for Marine Lord, they got a lot of value for themselves. They probably killed like 15, 20 villagers. And one of the concerning things right now for Beastie is that he's still starving. 285 food per minute. His farming eco is yet to be built up. The farmers that he had got killed by those Lancers, whereas on the other side, now he's up against a fully boomed Chinese player who's establishing granaries and he's up to 93 villagers. Soon, Imperial Age could be a reality for Marine Lord, but instead, he's trying to push on full Castle Age mode. He senses the blood in the water and one has to wonder if Beastie even finished with those uh, Royal Institute upgrades. Because if he didn't, then this is a great window for his opponent. And look at that. Not a single upgrade yeah. research there for Beastie. That's a disaster. Mm. And I, I think one of the strange things for me watching this matchup, Marine Lord's going full horseman right now. He's got 12 horsemen in the queue. At the moment, he's got 17 horsemen out on the field. What, what is this read that he has found where he said, okay, horsemen are going to be the go-to here? Obviously, the French love to play Arbor Trier. There's already a big mass of archers out as well that have carried across from the Feudal Age. So Marine Lord definitely thinks about that and says, I'm going to be going for a counterplay here with the horsemen. This is a heavy investment coming out from him. Yeah, but this could come as a surprise because as you pointed out, it's not a natural thing. Well, it's a natural reaction, but not something that you commonly see from players because you rarely use horsemen as the backbone of your army in Castleage, right? And this could come as a nasty surprise here for Beastie as the horsemen flank around from the northern side. 
There are so many horsemen out right now for our Chinese player. He swoops in and takes out all the Arbolatria, all of the archers on this backside. A complete surround right now. A beautiful bait coming out from a ring lord. It is indeed true. He is a, a master baiter and he has done a beautiful job here with this bait, clinching this game right now. This is looking absolutely good. Game gets called. Beastie Cutie taps out and Marine Lord goes 2-1 up in this series. Good game. Marine Lord, what a game from him here. The defense at the beginning against that ramp push, then building up that economy behind this one, always being active with every single unit that he has had. He was able to do so much damage on Beast's Eco and that Villager Graph summarizes everything. Until about five minutes ago, the villager count was essentially dead even between the two players. Suddenly, Beastie comes in with a, or Marine Lord rather, comes in with a couple of knights, does so much eco damage while also simultaneously building up his own economy behind that one. And then as you pointed out, the horsemen, not something that you necessarily expect in a full castle age war. You're expecting palace guards, you're expecting the lancers. You're expecting maybe Nest of Bees to deal with your archers and Arbaletria, but full horseman switch is not something that's super common, despite the fact that it makes a ton of sense. Marine Lord comes out of the woods with a bunch of horsemen, surprises Beastie Cutie, gets the surround, gets the kill, and with that, takes game number three. That was so masterful. I can't I can't even fathom it. That was just something of beauty. The fact that he, for the, the entirety of that early castle age, was going palace guards, lancers, forcing the issue over on his enemy side of the base. Meanwhile, sneakily, he was building up a giant mass of horsemen and then finally baits them all out with the castle drop. He says, hey, I'm putting down a castle. Come and kill me. And then out of the woodwork come a million horsemen and just absolutely crush him. Beautiful stuff from Marine Lord, and that is why people say he is the master of being good.